Hey, Mel here with the Screencasting Wizard, helping you digitize your knowledge to get it online and web ready. So today, um, a, one of my readers was asking a question about uh, a video that I did for a software company down in Irvine. And specifically, he's asking about a specific video and how I did this uh, zooming effect to pull forward part of the screen, such as what was done in this particular video time code. So let's go ahead and take a look at that video real quick. So here's a video that we're talking about. It's on the Karyo website. And uh, we're fast forwarding to about time code 417 here. So let's take a look at that real quick. The option of choosing to assign any one of six levels of permission. The scheduler level. Okay, so what he's talking about is this effect in uh, that I, I used Camtasia for Macintosh, by the way, when I did this, uh, uh, the capture and also the edit for this uh, particular screencast. And so what I'm doing is I'm pulling forward a part of the screen. And he's asking about how I do that. Uh, and it's a good question because um, that effect is not actually built into Camtasia for Macintosh. It is a feature request that has gone out to them, uh, but it was still, still an effect that we wanted to see if we could pull out. And there was some discussion about this in one of the forums. So I created a workaround that actually does exactly that kind of an effect. But it requires um, software. <laughs> it requires the screencasting software that you're using to have at least two video tracks, which if you've seen my series, on uh, comparing some of the best screencasting software, you'll know now why it's important to have more than just one vi video track. It just gives you the ability and the flexibility to do these kinds of effects. It's the same kind of effect when I did this um, um, particular tutorial on how to create a pivot table in Excel. What I wanted to do here was to zoom in on the right side of the screen. The problem is, watch what happens to the left side. It scrolls off of the screen and you can't see it. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and pause it there. I turn the, the volume down. So you can kind of see that as I zoom in on the right side to show how those manipulations, you know, what, what the user needs to do there in this tutorial, you know, a key part of the screen goes off screen on the left side. So now let me fast forward to the part where I ended up with the solution that I did, which was basically to, again, do the same technique to tease out this section of the screen on the left side and as I zoom in on the right side to pull out this left part and bring it forward uh, bring it forward into the right actually so watch what I did here and let's bring the volume up just a little bit so you'll hear a little bit of the volume in the from the tutorial as well report with the number of patients by gender simple enough what that does is okay so you see the importance there is there's this whole other part of the screen where something is happening depending on the selections I make on a whole other part of the screen. So what I so the solution is to zoom in on one part while bringing out the other part of the screen and zooming it in. So let me show you how I do these. So here I am in Camtasia for Macintosh, and you can do this with also ScreenFlow, pretty much any software, uh, screen cap capture software where you have at least two video tracks. And here's what I mean. So here's that second video track. So you can kind of let me zoom in just a little bit here. All right. So this second video track here is where I've basically taken a clip of a copy of the underlying video track, which is this whole thing. So let me go ahead and delete this uh, second track here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that guy so it's gone. All right. So now what we're dealing with is basically that whole first level of that screen. So I'm going to go ahead and delete some of the keyframing that I've already done here. So all we're left now is just that whole screen segment, which was part of the screen crap capture that I did originally. So now the trick is, is as I, I want to zoom in on this right side while I bring out this left side over here. Well, what we actually have to do is, as you can see, there's a little cut here, and I did a little cut over here. So I'm basically taking a, a, a clip of the entire video track. Now what I want to do is copy this. So I'm just going to do a control C on my keyboard and then put my cursor to where I want it to be. So it's right at the start there, and then we'll do a control V. All that is essentially done is just basically copy that same video track, that same clip on top of itself, okay, but onto a second video track. So let's call this V2 for video 2, and let's call this one down here V1 for video 1, all right? So now watch what I'm going to be doing here. So the trick is I want to make video 2 or V2 just this little segment of the screen. In Camtasia for Macintosh, I'm actually able to crop this by selecting this little icon here. Let me zoom out and you see where all these little handles are. Basically manipulating that V2, which is this track here, okay, this video clip, um, and just getting it to a point where I'm just going to focus on just that little segment, okay, that I want from there. And just to let you know how this is working here, so let me take this one, 
uh, V1 underneath it, I'm going to, and I'm going to reduce the opacity, which is to say I'm going to make it invisible. All right. So now you can see that all I'm really doing here now is I'm just basically manipulating V1. All right, because I made V2, uh, I'm manipulating V2, I made V1 invisible. So now I'm going to re remove the uh, um, the cropping, and all I have now is just this one uh, image here that I can just basically manipulate. All right. So let's bring it back to where it was. Now I'm going to make V1 visible again by bringing up the opacity. All right. And then now we start keyframing it. I'm going to keyframe first V1, meaning I'm going to make V1, the, the large part, zoom in on the, on the segment that I want to focus on. So let's go ahead and put a keyframe effect in here. All right. So now I'm basically taking V1, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, scale up to, oh, I don't know. That looks good right there. Okay, to that segment of the screen, so I can show the different things I'm going to be doing. But as you notice, what ended up happening, let me move uh, V1 out of the way for a minute. That, set, that other part of the screen has already moved off. Lucky, I've got this copy of the entire thing that I've made. So there's V1. There's a clip that we uh, cropped from V1. And all I'm going to do now is put a keyframe key on that as well to start and end with the other keyframe. So we'll do this here. Copy and grab, and then I'm so now I've got that keyframe there. Let's start this to where it was, and then where it ends up in Camtasia for Mac. All you basically do is you define what the ending point is, where you want that thing to end up. So I'm going to define it to end here with a little bit bigger uh, view. There we go. And now you can take. Let's take a look at what that looks like. In the gender field and okay. dropping it works? into the. All right. So basically, what we've done is. We took a copy of a clip, a segment of that video, and uh, took a copy of it, pasted it on top of itself on V2, then just cropped it to just a section of the screen that I wanted to highlight. And then I keyframed them separately to do the two different actions. So as you can see, what's happening underneath here is coming from the keyframing that we did here on V1. So as we move forward, it's getting bigger while we focus on the right side. Meanwhile, what's happening over here on V2 is we're just taking that cropped section of the screen and we're moving it to the right and making it bigger as well. So that's basically what we've done. So we're keyframing them both individually, which is again why it's important to have more than two tracks. And sometimes you'll want a third track because you may be wanting to do uh, something else, to so highlight a call out or something like that on top of all of this. And that's why it's important to have at least, I would say, three video tracks on your screen capture software. All right? So that's basically the effect there. And then the other last little thing I might do just to tease out the uh, separation, just a little bit more contrast, is to add a drop shadow effect to that uh, to that uh, segment that we took on to V2. And so now you can see that as it glows and moves forward, it'll actually, there'll be a, a drop shadow behind it. Watch. The gender field and okay. dropping it. So those are just the little things that you can do to, to just kind of tease things out. All right, that's about it. Uh, so that's how I do the, what I call the V2 zoom effect, V2 for creating a second video track and then zooming it in forward. If you have any questions like that, let me know. Uh, this is Mel Eclair, and again, did this with uh, Camtasia from Macintosh. If you have any other questions like that, let me know. This is uh, Mel with the Screencasting Wizard, helping you digitize your knowledge to get it online. Web ready. Take care.